the Ormond Way, the sixth stage of the Ireland Way. And um, if you're wondering why I look the exact same as I did from the Multine Way, if you haven't seen the Multine Way, go back and look at it. So I'm actually starting uh, the exact same day as I did uh, the Multine Way. So the Ormond Way, straight into it. So let's go. You're, you're limping a bit, what happened? Oh, I sat down for a while so I got cold. Twisted my ankle a little bit. You gonna be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. What a relief it is to be walking through fields. Not roads, but fields! Yes! I've just gotta say, it's such a pleasure to walk on. It's it's green grass, it's it's fields, it's soothing on the feet. It's, you know, it's just like carpet to walk on compared to roads and hard ground that I, that I have been walking on. So, so far so good. And uh, it appears that the welcoming committee have uh, decided to join us. Do you fancy walking among them? They're my friends. They're your friends? <laughs> They're my friends. What's wrong lads? You've never seen a camera before? Yeah, I got into Upper Church, got my stamp in uh, Paz Bar. There was a function on in there so we decided to go across the road. Um, really, really nice little place, had a really, really tasty pizza. Fairly, fairly, fairly tired now at the moment. Uh, it's slow start, late start. Hopefully I can get up uh, to Tumavera. Uh, pretty quickly. For some reason I don't think that's the style I'm supposed to go over. <laughs> There's these two stunted trees behind me and as I was walking up to them the, uh, a mist is sort of swirling here in, in this wood. It's it's something out of a fairy tale novel. It's enchanting. It's 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 I feel quite exhilarated just walking through here. I, I don't feel like I'm in Ireland. Um I don't know where I am. Maybe I took a wrong turn and ended up going through a fairy portal or something, but uh, Storm and Way now is kind of throwing up some nice surprises. So there's a bit of a overgrown trail. Let's see where it goes. The nettles here are absolutely massive. And, uh, I'm starting to question if this is the actual trail at all, but uh, I wasn't expecting anything as overgrown as this now. But yeah, good old fun, good old fun. I stopped in Hogan's, where Michael gave me my stamp and also a cup of tea on the house. It was also the spot that I met up with Aoife. Just outside Temple Dairy and uh, this is actually the first field I've gone through where the cows are just absolutely uninterested and they just, they're just eat, happy enough eating away and just not even bothered. I was just thinking of a multi way, I was running away from the cows <laughs> and now I'm walking through them. <laughs> Just came through a really lovely patch of wooded area there and um, just a note to you all, uh, follow that ribbon around the tree, not the old oak tree but the tree anyway, uh, that leads your way, there seems to be no signs there just yet and don't worry, they won't lead you wrong. Mm. Bloody hell! Marching to Tumavera against the dying daylight, my whole body was wrecked, but my sore feet trudged on. We finally made it to Tumavera and received a very warm welcome from John from the Tipperary Inn. The Tumavera hurlers were always very athletic and they were always lean because food wasn't as available as it is nowadays. So, but, but, but they became very fast and a lot of the other teams weren't able to stay with them. So they became known as the Tommy Barry Greyhounds. And as such, we still, st any t anything to do with the village, the Greyhound appears on. So we just left Tumavera there. Body was very sore, very, very tired. Uh, got to the Tipperary Inn. Just, I, I was just literally going in to get the stamp 
and they just give me a tea straight away. They're really, really lovely people. I knew we were going to cross motorway at some stage, at some point. Uh, it was just interested to see what they're doing, uh, what, how they're doing it. But it looks like there's a small little bridge made. Ah, fair play to the people in the Ormond Way. We've both been fairly pleasantly surprised by this little uh, wood walk uh, on our way to Clock Jordan. The berries have been, you know, very colourful. Just you can see the destruction, the raw power of nature. John, well done. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Okay, good luck. Got a lovely message from a guy named uh, Garold who heard we were uh, coming into Clock Jordan and uh, told us to pop into the uh, Middle Country Cafe uh, where <laughs> we'd be getting some lunch. So I absolutely incredibly warm warm welcome that they're giving me up there. And um, yeah, it's definitely raised the spirits and the mood. Um, so let's just get to Clock Jordan and get fed. We checked into Django's hostel where the energetic Django greeted us. An owner, Pa, told us a little more about the eco-village. Our remit is to show this model of sustainability that we've built here uh, and to encourage people to uh, study what we've done here. We're, we're the first eco-village in the country uh, to, to, to be developed, um, uh, but we would like to see more developments like this. Back hiking on my own again, I was ready to set off, but not before I had a little chat with Gerald. The origin name Clot Jordan goes back to the River Jordan, and it concerns the original Anglo-Norman memorial settlement, and a returning knight who brought back a stone from the River Jordan and used it in the construction of his castle here. Taking Gerald's advice, I detoured to visit Scudaboy Bog, a real natural marvel. Going through Balagari and English Soul Roads, kind of having its toll a bit. Or it is what it is, you just got to kind of battle through these things. But I just found these three carved heads quite fascinating. I'd, I'd love to know the story behind them. Uh, so if anybody out there knows, let me know. Walking through the fields before Laura were fantastic. But what was truly amazing, what was waiting for me in the Friars Tavern, I got my stamp a hearty meal, made some new friends. Donna and Mark even let me pour a pint or two. But best of all was that they let me sleep in front of the fire. Kind of ended abruptly, but uh, I finished the worm away. <laughs> Um, yeah, the sign just kind of popped up out of nowhere and um, there seems to be a gap between here and Port Tomina where the Ormond Way stops. The walking route ends here, so that's the Ormond Way. So you thought it was over? Nah. The abrupt ending of the Ormond Way means that I have to make my way to Port Tomina on the main road. The busy whizzing cars flying by, so not too happy about it, but it is what it is.